Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing well today. We're looking to Pinterest and this stock really got crushed of about 71.4% of its value for almost about a year now. And the prospects of the company are pretty interesting and you're gonna see why in a second. All right, so the first thing I wanna look at here is the growth of the company. We can see here that the revenue from 2017 to 2021 almost grew by nine times in only five years. That's ridiculous growth. And if we look at the net income now, we can see that the company wasn't profitable up until mid-2021. We can see that revenue year over year for the last year increased by about 52%. The net income increased by 3.46%. Earnings per share is also increasing very rapidly. So is free cash flow. And free cash flow per shares are also increasing like ridiculously. This company is becoming a cash flow machine. We can already see in the growth on the graph how the free cash flow are growing and pretty consistently too. The book value is also increasing by 35%, which is pretty, pretty good. Tangible value is also increasing. So in order for the growth part, this company is really pretty good, to be honest. Now here, we can see that the monthly active users in international and US have started to be declining a little bit uh, between 2020 and 2021. This being said, if you look on the right, we can see that the average revenue per user, both in well, in international, global, and in the US, they're both increasing um, from 2020 to 2021. They're both increasing, um, and this is pretty good to see. If we now jump into the profitability, we can already see that gross margin is almost at 80%. For a social media company, it's it's pretty good still. Operating margin is at 12.65, net margin 12%. These are average. Um, but Free cash flow margin at 28%, which is, it's pretty good. Free cash flow as a percentage of earnings at 235%. This is really good to see. Now, if you look into the return of investment in capital, we can see that it's almost at 20%, which is good. The return on equity is at 10.4%, which is still pretty good. Return on asset is not that good. It's on average, almost 9%. The company could become a little bit more productive with their assets to generate more sales. But overall, the profitability is still pretty good and the company is really generating a lot of cash flow. Now, if you look at the financial health of the company, we can already see that the current ratio is at 12. This means that the, current, the company has currently the ability to pay off 12 times its current short-term obligations with its current assets. Um, that's pretty, that's amazing. Um, intangible asset as a percentage of total assets, only 1.73%, which means that the most of the assets the company have are tangible, which is good. Uh, shares are increasing almost 5%. This is not too alarming, but it's still not the best thing to see. We can see on the graph that uh, the company issued the most of its shares in 2019. Uh, they issued a lot of shares, but it wasn't a consistent increase in shares. All right, a quick note that I want to mention, thought was pretty interesting. If you look at the total cash and equivalents, we can see that it's sitting at $2.48 billion. That's a lot of money. And if you look at the market cap, which is currently at $18 billion after the stock price getting crushed for a year, this amount of cash represents 13.75% of the company. What this means is that if you were to buy the, the company right now, the stock price per share would become 21.7 cents if you take off the percentage that is cash. And that's pretty good in my opinion. And if you now look on the right, one of the huge thing about this company is that it has literally zero debt zero debt a company can't go bankrupt without debt technically so a lot of cash no debt at all um these are both looking amazing to me all right this is the second quick note and this is a big red flag for me if you look at the insider transaction in the recent months we can see that all of them are literally selling let's see the first one this is cfo he sold at 26 and 65 which is not too much above the 24 dollars of the current price Again, CFO sold here, SVP head of products sold at $25, CFO, CFO, general counsel, general counsel, co-founder, co-founder. These are all selling and this is only a few days ago, almost a week ago. And these prices are slightly above what's currently selling it for. And this is kind of scaring me, to be honest with you. So this would be a pretty important red flag for me. All right, everyone. So the second red flag that I found is here. If we look at the cash flow statement, we can see that the stock based compensation is really, really significant compared to the net cash provided by operation. And I know stock based compensation isn't a cash outflow, but this is still diluting significantly the company taking out value from the investors. And this is still a good way to compare them. And if we look at the trailing 12 months, we can see that the company is still today 
giving out stock-based compensation of about $415 million when it only produced cash flow from operations of about $752 million. If you calculate this is giving out 55% of your operating cash flow in stock-based compensation. Like I said, it's not a cash outflow, but this is still a huge amount. So this would be a red flag for me. All right, before we go into my evaluation, let's see what analysts think. Even though we don't put too much weight on them, it's always nice to see what are their expectations and forecasts. If you now look at the revenue estimate, we can see that in compounded annual growth rate for the next five years, the analysts are expecting the company to grow about 24%. Uh, which is still pretty good. Uh, if we look at the earnings per share, that's at 43% in average for the compounding annual, compounding annual growth rate for the next five years, which is significant growth of earnings, to be honest. And I wouldn't even be surprised that the company is seeing huge amount of free cash flow growth, like we saw earlier. Uh, the price targets, we can see in average, they're estimating an about upside of 71%. And we can see that for most recent recommendations, most of them are giving out hold with 22 analysts and then 13 for buy and five for strong buy. All right, now if we look at the valuation, we can see that the current PE ratio is at 53, which is pretty high in my opinion. And the, pre the price to free cash flow is at 24, which is a bit more interesting and attractive. Now, I prefer to use the price to free cash flow when I'm looking at these valuations because free cash flows are harder to manipulate and they're more representative of how much money is actually coming in and going out of the company. Now on the right, if we take into account the total cash that the company has, which is a big amount that we saw, the $2.48 billion, the PE ratio comes down to 49 and the price of free cash flow comes down to 20.86. The price of free cash flow is pretty interesting at around 20 for me. I can see Pinterest becoming a cash flow machine. I will be putting Pinterest in my watch list and keep following and try to do more research on it. But I do think that the company is pretty attractive and it's pretty interesting. So that was it for Pinterest guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to support the channel and I'll see you on the next one.